when London at the software defined operations at Automation Network event, I'm here with Jamie Davies, my colleague from telecom.com. Jamie, how are you doing, Ray? I'm very well. Uh, so you sat through the uh, the panel today, which was a pleasure, I know, on telemetry and Sorry. analytics. Uh, <laughs> what I mean, was your, it was, it's a packed packed audience here today. It was, what I was mean, your it, key takeaway? It was expertly hosted. I thought first much. and foremost. Um, no, no. I mean, the big, the big, the big takeaway for me, and I don't know whether you felt the same, was more about the idea of the unknown. So it was. There's, there's still a lot of questions about how to use data and where to use data and what to do with data when you've actually got it. Where to store it. What where to keep. What to keep, what to get rid of, whether you actually need it in the future, what are the use cases. It seems that we've been talking about these questions for a long time. You know, AI and machine learning, they are pretty, you know, revolutionary topics, but they're not exactly new, are they? You know, automation, we've been talking about automation for what seems like years now, and AI has been bubbling away in the background, and I know the telcos are a little bit slow to always pick the pace on these new technologies, but it seems that we're still at square one. I don't, I don't know whether you sort of feel the same. I think we're just moving off square one, but you know, we're, we're only just, it seems that the operators are only just moving away from, you know, polling the network every five, 10 or 15 minutes and gathering that data yeah. and having it in a little pocket and then looking at it later to having the real time data, which they're looking at more in real time and marrying up with service data to go, oh, that's why that service degraded because there was that problem and so on and so forth. And you think, my goodness, it's 2018, the end of 2018, people talking about 5G in 2020. Yeah. The shit is about to hit the fan. We can bleep that out, I know. <laughs> uh, I don't know, did you get that sense as well? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's an, it an interesting point that was raised, you know, when you, we're just around the corner, you've got, you're going to have all this massive amount of data flowing through the network, and we haven't even started talking about IoT. So back to the points you raised earlier, where do you store this data? First of all, you've got to identify the data that's coming in at real time so you know where to put it. I think um, one of the guys on the panel session made a very interesting point. You know, you've got, you've got public, private and on-prem uh, storage facilities. Well, which one goes where? What data sets go to what domain? Uh, you know, to remain compliant and... Right, all the regulations as well. Uh, you know, you're, you're remaining within, within the regulations. But then how do you get that back out? What do you delete? How much cost is it going to be to actually store all of this? There's so many, so many unknowns. And like you said, the tsunami of data is just about to start gathering pace. Yeah. Um, but, well, well, I mean, they, re they they can see what's happening, see what's coming down the pipe. So it seems that there are companies working on it. And I think it's worth noting that uh, BT's Neil McRae in, in his keynote this morning, you know, was talking about how the vendors. The, the companies they work with, yeah. that BT works with, are really starting to catch up and deliver the capabilities that BT needs to automate its networks. And they're already doing trials with uh, with Verizon on they were um, managing a drone over London, but it was being managed by Verizon from New Jersey, okay. and, and, okay. and and having to all the data that needed to come from the, the drone to the network, so the network knew where the drone was to provide the information back to New Jersey so they could like steer it. That's pr Obviously that's only a trial and a test, but that's the kind of thing that they're doing now to figure out, okay, how did that work? What was the data we collected? What did we need, etc. But like you said, they haven't even started applying like, machine learning algorithms for that to understand you know, what usually happens. What are the trends, yeah, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So a hell of a long way to go. I mean, this is the big thing that I picked up. Well, not necessarily last week, but a week before. I think there was, um, I was at one of our competitors events over at uh, Total, Total Telecom's uh, Congress, which was about two weeks ago. I think one of the chaps from DT said this, directly back to your points, this is where the telcos can add real value and create real revenue in the future. It's on the edge because you know, sending all of that back to Verizon, all that data back to Verizon's uh, core network where it all, you know, uh, it'd be processed and analyzed and then sending the insight back then, it's just not gonna happen. You need to monetize the edge and create this, uh, you know, edge computing so you can actually capitalize on this market <clears throat> before the OTTs do. 
because you can bet you can bet Google and Amazon with their cloud businesses are looking into how they can yeah. uh, make money off edge computing. Well, and that's another area that everybody's talking about, but nobody's yet quite figured out. So, yeah. Anyway, great. All right, Jamie, great. Thanks for talking. Yeah, Good to nice. talk to you.